Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. We're still hatching cool baby snakes every single day, and I want to take some time to show you the animals that I'm really excited about. You're watching Snake Bites. With being about halfway hatched out, we've really hatched some really cool snakes. Some of them are first time animals, and some animals that have been produced in the past, but I just really am excited about them. This bumblebelly is one of those animals. I've always loved bumblebee ball pythons, and when you add a yellow belly into it, it just really pops the color and makes it super yellow and super clean. This super pastel queen bee was actually produced by a buddy of mine named Jared Carr, but as soon as I saw the animal, I knew I had to have it. So we worked out a deal, and I tell you what, it's an outrageous snake. I've shown you this mimosa pied before, but let's get the record straight on something. It actually is a mimosa het for pied that's expressing a pied trait. Its dad was a ghost pied and its mother was just a mimosa, so I'm not sure if there's some pied thing going on or not, but the fact is it does have a ton of white, and I really like it. Sticking with the champagne mutations, this is an animal that I actually produced a couple years ago for the first time, but I still like it every time I produce them, and it's a champagne. It's a pinstripe cross to a champagne. This is a cinnamon lesser, and even though it's only a double codon mutation, I think the mutations really mold great with each other. It makes the cinnamon nicer, and it makes the lesser nicer. This is a caramel spider. Last year, the very first ones were ever produced, and they're really neat animals. The thing that's cool about them is as they grow, they actually get more vibrant and more interesting. But this guy looks pretty cool at this size. I think it's gonna be a knockout when it gets to about three to 400 grams. This is a Mojave Spinner. It's a three codon mutation. It's got Mojave, Pinstripe, and Spider in it. And I just love it because it makes it so clean looking. This is an Enchi bee, so what it is is a pastel spider Enchi. What's really interesting is that the Enchi cleans it up an awful lot, and one of the real characteristics that you see on all Enchi bees is the super reduced pattern on their head. This was an animal I was really excited to hatch out. It's a male, and it's going to go great into future breeding plans. This is actually an Enchi queen bee, which means it's an Enchi pastel spider and lesser. It's just got four awesome genes in it. I'm a huge fan of the chocolate morph, and this is actually a pastel camo. It's the second one ever produced. I produced another one last year, and what it is is a pastel super chocolate pinstripe. Again, sticking with a new chocolate morph, this is actually a chocolate bumblebee. So it's a chocolate, a pastel, and a spider. This is a really cool first time snake we produce. It's actually a Cine Pin Woma. I just love the way the mutation melded together with the three mutations. It's got such a cool looking head. All right, guys, that's Cal's question of the week. There's been things that have just been boggling my mind. Here's one of them. If Kool-Aid were water and water were Kool-Aid, would you be as tired of Kool-Aid as you are of water? And would water be tasteful compared to the tasteless Kool-Aid? Text your video comment below. Let me know what you think. It's driving me crazy. These gold dust ball pythons are some of the coolest snakes that I've been producing the last couple years. It's actually a mutation that we call a black opal that we've been working on for a while now. And sure enough, this is the super version added to a spider. Pewter bees have been around for a while, but I still get excited every time I hatch them. This is just a super pastel yellow belly, but I was just blown away at the actual color that came out. The amount of purple and diffusion is incredible. This is a brand new mutation that we produced this year and we really don't have a name for it yet. It's just really cool. It does have spider in it, but I love the head pattern. So if you guys have any ideas, go ahead and comment down below. This is an Enchi Mojave spider. The thing that's so cool about it is that Enchi not only cleans everything up, but it also gives it that kind of purple look to it. This is a chocolate spinner, and again, I just love the chocolate jeans. So this has got chocolate, spider, and pinstripe in it. Unfortunately, this girl's in shed. She just hatched out a few days ago, but it is a first for us, and it's actually a fire lemon blast. This thing looks so incredible. It almost looks like a fire super blast, but it actually only has one pastel gene in it. This is a pin pied, and what makes this animal so special to me is the fact that it's really combining two of my favorite morphs, which are pinstripe and pie balls. This is a pewter Woma. The thing that's really cool about these guys, I produced one last year, and as they get older, they get more and more peachy colored. They're really incredible when they're sub-adults and even adults. 
I've shown you guys adult scaleless corn snakes a lot, but this is what they look like as soon as they hatch. Sticking on the scaleless theme, this is a scaleless Texas rat. As you can see, they don't have nearly the color as babies as they will when they get to a year old. We've been hatching these guys for a long time, but you know I love hognose, and one of my favorite morphs are these azanthic hogs. Sticking on hognose, this is actually an anaconda hog, and as you can see, it's doing the dead anaconda thing where it fakes to be dead. What's neat about it is you can actually see how the anaconda markings on the belly are solid black with no markings, and on the front, you've got really cool little dots down them. But again, you can see how he's sticking his tongue out and acting like he's actually dead, and if I touch him a little bit, he'll roll right over and play dead. This animal hatched out from a Jelly Brooks bred to an albino, and I think that there actually might be a name for this mutation, but to be honest with you, I'm not sure what it is. I've been producing these granite Mex Mex for a while, but this probably is the nicest specimen that I've ever hatched. All right, so this isn't a groundbreaking project by any stretch of the imagination, but the fact is I always get harped on on the fact that I don't produce boas and I don't get enough boas in the show. Well, here you go. This was a litter of boas I produced just a couple weeks ago, which were hypos, het for sun glow. I love cow kings, and I really love when there's new mutations in cow kings. These are actually a double recessive mutation, which is a chocolate and a ghost cow. And as you can see, there's some really interesting polymorphism within this one clutch. This is a first of a kind animal here. This is actually an albino ghost glade, so it's a double recessive mutation in an Everglades rat snake. So there's an overview of some of our animals that we've hatched. As you can see, the racks are filling up in here, and there's a long way to go before we're done hatching, so there's gonna be a lot more cool stuff to show you guys in future episodes. Dude, I honestly cannot believe how much food you say at the Chinese buffet. I can eat at the buffets. Well, what have your diet? This. My food baby. <laughs> Eight months. <laughs> Ooh, she's a kicking too. What do you, what do, you do? Uh, around two o'clock. Oh, I'll get you. Disgusting. I'll come and get you for the big moment. Ooh. Oh. Oh. The baby. It's a food baby. It's coming. My food baby. Oh, my cow, it's time. My food baby. Dude, what? What's going on? What's my going on? Food. Now? Right baby. now? It's it. I'm not prepared. Hold on. I'll be right back. Oh. Hold on. For this week's comment of the week on the episode, what kind of snake do I have? The question was, what's the most interesting bet you've ever won or lost? And Coil Constrictor said, My friend and I decided to flip a coin a few times for him to cut his long hair. I won, he cut, then he flipped again, and my initials went in the back of his head. It was awesome. I got a pick to prove it. Coming from a guy with long hair, there's no way that I would flip a coin to get my hair cut. Until next time, you guys keep sending me creative comments. I'm going to feature you on a future episode. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and enjoyed some of the successes that we've already had this season. I have no doubt that there's going to be some other cool snakes hatching in some future shows. Hey, you guys make sure to leave a voicemail down below at this number. Tell me something cool about yourself or something you want to see in the show. Just hit me up anytime. And I want to give a shout out to my boys over at ZooMed for the new gear. They're really cool. If you want to check out some cool products, go to ZooMed.com. Until next time, this has been Snake Bites.